Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Woman tries to claim she slipped on the wet floor that wasn't wet. I shut her down and kicked her out. The second story. Guy is rude to retail worker who set the prices in the shop, ends up getting ripped off a few hundred dollars. The third story. Client started screaming that she would call the police because she was being deceived in the price. She did not know that the police were already behind her. On to the first story. Oh my god, let me call you an ambulance. So I'm a full-time assistant manager wage slave at one particular branch of the company I work at, but very very occasionally I have to do a shift at another store. Usually in the morning because I'm training people, but today I got the late afternoon shift over there just to make things easier. My normal branch is entirely carpeted, but this branch I'm covering in is mostly carpet with a strip of lino. Maybe 5 meters wide in the length of the wall, maybe 10 meters, along the back wall. Every couple of days that area gets mopped, usually just after the store closes to prevent accidents. Now today I was doing training and kinda helping to cover as well. Myself and the coworker I'm on with are both scheduled to finish at closing time, so things need to be done before we close, including mopping that section. Now this branch has a customer that is constantly trying to cause trouble for the staff. Don't they all really? I haven't yet met this woman but the ladies at this branch have warned me ahead of time what she's like. I promise all this backstory is relevant. Okay so it's getting close to the end of the day. There are a couple of people around that I'm helping. When my coworker gets my attention and discreetly points out to me the woman they warned me about. She's looking around, eyes darting, just generally looking a bit shifty. I tell my coworker to stay at the counters and I'm going to go down the back and mop so I can keep an eye on her. She's wandering aimlessly around the store. I pull out a mop and bucket and wet floor sign and get to it, all while watching her like a hawk. She doesn't do anything out of the ordinary until she notices me mopping. She makes a beeline for the table next to the lino that's a little further down from where I am. I notice she keeps looking at me out of the corner of her eye, keeps fiddling with the table, keeps looking at me. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen, so I take a step back and turn to the side so I'm not facing her. What I am facing is a mirror that has a perfect view of this woman without her knowing I can see her. I watch as she lays down on the lino then starts yelling, My arm! Oh my god, my arm! It's broken! I whip around and come running over to her, feigning shock and concern and asking what happened. See, I fell and broke my arm. Oh my god, how could you let this happen? I'll sue you. What's your name? I'm gonna sue you and this company right out of business. I pull out my phone and tell her I'm calling an ambulance. What I actually do is call my area manager, AM, a woman I have a brilliant working relationship with. We're on the same wavelength. Me, hello? Yes, I need an ambulance. AM, what's wrong? Has something happened? Me, I have a lady here who's fallen over. C in the background. D right I've fallen over. This is all your fault. AM, is it that woman? Me, yes, she thinks her arm might be broken. AM, do you need me to play along? Me, yes please. AM, how does she think she fell? Me, not sure, let me check. I speak to the customer. The dispatcher would like to know if you're feeling dizzy at all. Disorientated? Have you taken anything? Perhaps had something to drink? C. F you. I fell on your effing wet floor because you were mopping and I slipped. Me. I haven't mopped this section yet. The floor here is completely dry. And wouldn't you know it, her arm completely healed in a matter of seconds. She didn't say another word and began to stand up to leave. I stood up with her and put on my deadly serious I am furious do not mess with me do you understand voice. Me. I'd like to make something very clear. You no longer welcome in this store, or in fact any of our stores. I saw you lie down on the floor. How dare you try and pull a stunt like that. If I see you here again I will call the police. Get out and don't come back. She bolted. AM still on the phone. D, you're scary when you're angry. To be honest I was expecting her to call my bluff. I didn't think she'd actually let me call an ambulance. Equal parts determined and crazy I suppose. That was great. Your regional manager is great. It's great that he understood and supported you. This woman obviously has some kind of mental illness. I think she should have called an ambulance and been sent to a psychiatric unit. Crazy lady. She wanted OP to grovel at her feet, apologize for the slip and fall, and give her a $50 gift card for her problems. As she was falling on the floor, did she think there might be cameras here? Either way, I would tell her, we can review the security footage with the police once the EMT has cleared the violation. What did she think would happen if you actually called an ambulance? They would have known in 5 seconds that her arm was not damaged at all, and then she would have been charged. 
I would insist that she stay in the ambulance, and then once you show them the video of her lying on the floor, make her pay the ambulance trip bill for fraud. The next story is, never be rude to people in small retail shops. When I was 16, I worked for my uncle. He was a tailor, but also had a clothes store next door to his main shop. He let me run the clothes store, which basically involved keeping it clean, serving customers and displaying stock. He ran the business side of it. I was paid to essentially sit there all day. It was a pretty quiet store in a quiet area, so it was a pretty cruisy job. Great for school holidays. I started working for him when I was around 12 just helping clean the shop. Started selling around 14. This taught me quite a lot, as I got to watch him interact with customers. Whenever we got new stock in, I would have to put the price tags on myself. Most of the clothes we sold were men's office workwear, suits, shirts, trousers, and the like. Average price for a suit was around $150 to $200. One day I had a belligerent customer come in. He saw that I was quite young, so he took to bullying me around. He would swear and act very impatient, and would call me slow and stupid. I dealt with rude customers before, but this guy was far too much. To the best of my knowledge, I hadn't done anything wrong. He may have been having a bad day, but to me that doesn't excuse the insults. He had come in quite early. Usually we opened at 9, but didn't get any customers until much later. It was rare to get any customers before 11. That morning I had gotten a load of new stock in and hadn't finished putting on the price tags as it was a huge amount of new stock in. So because of his rudeness, I decided that I would charge him much, much more. Either he would decide it was too expensive or we would make a lot more money. He selected three suits and I told him they were $500 for the first two with the third being $700. They were actually around $200. We haggled a bit and I sold them for around $350 for this first two and $600 for the third. He was quite happy with what he saw as a major victory. I was quite happy I made an extra $700. I told my uncle what happened and he let me keep a percentage of the money as bonus. My uncle knew that particular customer and had issues with him before. Perhaps it wasn't the morally correct thing to do, but it serves to show you you shouldn't be rude. It's amazing that at 16 years old you saw the potential to make money from a customer like that. I would use this example if you've ever been in sales in any job you've encountered. I'm willing to say there was nothing morally wrong here. You gave him a price, he negotiated, and then agreed to pay the price after negotiation. So that price suited him and he was willing to pay that price. He was just a bad negotiator, that's all. Suggested retail prices and large retail transactions with unwavering prices have made us numb to bargaining. But it's a perfectly acceptable way of doing business, and it's still the norm in much of the world. You should do it more often. Being rude never helps. You've had bad luck with a customer, but he just hasn't realized yet that he's made an A of himself twice. You can charge as much as you want. It's a small private business. You didn't break any laws and you didn't break a made-up corporate policy. You profited from someone thinking they were better than others. The last story is, that's false advertisement. I'm gonna call the police. Background. I worked in an ice cream shop over the summer. Being a small town, we had a lot of regulars. Most of them were kind, Others had lots of stories of their own. Story. This story isn't about the bad regulars, though. It's about a pair of regulars who knew how to make everyone's day. Granted, you're on their good side. They were a couple of policemen who were passionate about keeping the town safe. And by God, there was hardly any crime to worry about. Even then, these guys were very polite and often joked around with our regulars, asking why they were eating here today or if they were causing any trouble. Other times, someone would immediately tell the officers that they suddenly lost appetite. The officers would just tell them that the door is always there and not to let it hit them on the way out. It was a common exchange and everyone who saw them would usually have a laugh, not fearing them at all. On this particular day I was called in suddenly when a coworker plunged out of a long rush. I normally don't work afternoons due to working night shift at the big box store down the street, but I got plenty of sleep before coming in to help. One customer finally got to the front of the line. She stared at the menu for quite some time. To get her moving I politely recommend our special of the day which was our fish sandwich for $1.99. And if you added a combo for $2.50, the total would be $4.49. Nine out of 10, this ends up being ordered and I love playing salesman without rudely telling people to keep the line moving. This ended up causing more confusion and grief than I could deal with today, however. The woman was asking why her total would come to more than $2.50 when she was confused with making a combo out of a fish sandwich, $1.99. I told her that adding a combo cost $2.50 and it was an additional charge. Customer. What do you mean that'll cost $4.49? The sign says the fish combo is $2.50. Me. No, it says that the fish sandwich is $1.99, and adding a combo to it, which includes fries and a drink, is an additional $2.50. This makes the total $4.49. Customer. Sounds like false advertisement to me. 
I'm gonna call the police and they're gonna land you and your manager in jail for false advertisement. At that glorious moment, I saw our two officers, Mike and Paul, happening to walk around the corner of the line. They hear the commotion and motion a don't tell her we're behind her signal to me. Me, as I winked at Mike and Paul. Ma'am, calling the police really won't be necessary. The fish sandwich is $1.99. Combo in addition to your sandwich is $2.50. The sign clearly states that. Customer, no it doesn't, and that's why I'm calling the police. Mike, ma'am, he's right. Calling us won't be necessary. We're here to help out. What's the problem? I explained the problem to Mike, and I could see Paul, the older officer, starting to yawn while holding in a laugh. Customer, it's still false advertisement. I went to college for business and marketing, and I know advertisement laws are not a laughing matter. Mike, wow, a 250 difference. That's not good. Startug, your restaurant has a customer's always right policy, correct? Me starting to sarcastically look nervous. Uh, yeah, we do. Mike trying to look serious while laughing a bit. Well then, looks like the customer's always right, Startug. We'll have to arrest you. Make a scene while we're at it, as I don't know if you false advertise or not. Customer's always right, no matter how wrong they are. Mike finally busted out laughing and tried apologizing to the customer, trying to get her to see how silly this whole scene was. The customer got peeved, and Paul finally decided to keep the line moving. Paul, when we get dispatched to stop, say theoretically a bank robbery, we'll have to explain that we're busy sorting a fast food robbery due to customer confusion and a BS customer's always right policy. Now take your order that was charged at 449, or we're gonna charge you with disorderly conduct. While I knew Paul said he would charge her, I know he was bluffing. He was beginning to lose his patience. Customer, then I'm getting the public attorney to sue you, Star Tug. Supposed attorney in line. Hey, how may I help you? The customer's face, which was already red from Paul and Mike scolding her, turned even redder. She was about to utter something but froze and left in a hurry. I was trying to hold my laughter in and I did finally get the line moving. Paul and Mike decided they were going to forego ordering anything until the line had simmered down, as they technically cut in line to stop the lady from harassing me. To say the least, if you ever have regulars, some of them may back you up when you least expect it. Every time they come in they always ask me if something is false advertising, and they motion to a pair of handcuffs. We laugh and they remain on the list of my favorite customers. Later that day Mike and Paul came back to order food but had to run in a hurry when there actually was a situation at a local bank. The timing was rather bizarre, and I wondered if it was the same lady who was trying to get the bank to give her 250 so she could afford the combo with her fish sandwich. Turns out it was a false alarm, due to a misclick of the silent alarm. The lady, like a lot of embarrassed people at my restaurant, never came back, nor did I see the police come to my house with a warrant for my arrest. Moral of the story is, go off script with your regulars. You'll get to know them, and in most bizarre circumstances, they can help you. I was surprised that the police she was about to call showed up at the store so just in time, but the fact that there was also a lawyer in the store blew my mind. <laughs> I love your story, OP. I can give you some advice. If you see a breakfast place full of cops every morning before your shift, you better go and order coffee and pancakes. They're probably very good and inexpensive. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Don't forget to subscribe.